Hello, I'm Sean Munger. I'm That History Guy. I teach history courses online, and I also do history here on YouTube. My website is at thathistoryguy.com. also have another blog, seanmunger.com. Uh, this is the third of four videos about a small island in Mahone Bay, Nova Scotia, Canada, called Oak Island, where people have been searching for treasure for at least 150 years. There is, in reality, no treasure buried on Oak Island, and there never was. In the first video in this series, I explained what the legend was and the key fact that the flood tunnels, which is supposedly uh, the trap that keeps all these treasure hunters from bringing anything up, the flood tunnels have in fact never been found. In the second part, the second video, I explained why there's no physical evidence of any treasure infrastructure. The so-called box drains on the beach have nothing whatsoever to do with treasure and in fact are part of an old salt cooking operation. If you haven't seen the first two videos, please go back and watch those as this kind of springboards from that. Uh, this series is itself part of a larger series called Historical Thoughts, where I use the process of history and the tools of historians to weed through various fakes, scams, and false impressions about things that happened in the past. In this installment, I'm going to address the paucity of the historical record for what has been happening on Oak Island supposedly since 1795. This is what truly amazed me when I started researching the legend on my own in the 1990s. You would think that the historical record is pretty robust, given the confidence with which uh, authors such as these, like uh, Mark Finian, who wrote this book in 1997, the uh, assertiveness with which they say certain things have happened in the past. Uh, but actually, the record is very, very thin. The origin story of Oak Island is not really the burial of the treasure, but the first treasure hunt, which is said to have occurred in 1795, when three kids discovered the initial treasure pit called the Money Pit, and upon digging, supposedly found oaken platforms leading down at 10-foot intervals uh, into, the, into the hole. Uh, invariably, this account precedes two, other, two or three other accounts of treasure hunting, a dig that is said to have happened in 1803, although some sources say it was 1801 or 1804, and then a Truro Company expedition in 1849. Now, the accounts of these early digs are crucial to the legend because it's on these early digs and these alone that key discoveries were made. The oak platforms, the flood tunnels, the initial discovery of the box drains, the chests that were supposedly discovered at the 98-foot level, which according to accounts were drilled into with uh, a device called an auger uh, during the 1849 expedition and passed through what they call metal in pieces, which of course must be doubloons or something like that. So note what's being laid out here in the early accounts. You have an explanation of one, how the treasure pit was originally discovered in 1795, Two, the springing of the trap, meaning the flood tunnels that make the recovery of the treasury so, treasure so difficult. This is the 1800s expedition. And then three, you have the further discovery that makes it at first blush seem like the treasure is just out of reach. Like the, and that's the Truro Company dig story. Notice if you were an investor trying to sell someone on the idea of financing a treasure hunt on Oak Island, these are exactly the three pieces of evidence or three, piece, three points that you would need to make to convince them. The thing is, though, that there's no contemporary evidence of these operations, no primary sources, as we historians say. When I began reading about Oak Island in 1991, I simply assumed that these expeditions were recorded as fact. They are not. Only later, after I started graduate school as a trained historian, did I notice that books about Oak Island never cite any primary sources when they lay out the legend, the usual story about the kids finding the island in 1795 and the first digs, etc. The books all cite other books about Oak Island, which are secondary sources, not primary sources. This is exactly how pseudo-history operates. Now, I talked about pseudo-history in my fake history video at the beginning of the historical thoughts series. This is pseudo-history. You see the exactly, exactly the same effect in books on fringe subjects like ancient aliens, 
Nazi occultism, JFK assassination, that sort of thing. The first printed accounts of treasure activity on Oak Island began appearing in British Columbia, or British and, and uh, Canadian newspapers, excuse me, in 1861. I found a reference to a visitor to Oak Island writing in 1857 of seeing evidence of prior digs that might have occurred before that time, but there's certainly nothing contemporary, meaning at the time, to, to attest to the alleged discovery of the 1795 events and the 1804-1801 dig. Some sort of license to dig on Oak Island was evidently issued in 1849 by some kind of provincial authority, and that's the only evidence, aside from hearsay, that this Truro Company dig took place. Of course, the license may have been issued and the dig never actually went off, or perhaps it did, but if it did, there's no direct evidence of it. We don't have newspaper articles, we don't have anything except the word of mouth of people who heard something about this event. So consider this flimsy record in comparison with the much more reliable evidence we have, which casts doubt on even the very basic points of the legend. For instance, most versions of the legend start in 1795 when the discovery of the pit is made by Daniel McGuinness and Anthony Vaughn, who are said to be children or teenagers at that time. In fact, genealogical records prove that Daniel McGuinness and Anthony Vaughn were in their 30s in 1795. They weren't kids, they were in their 30s. The legend usually states that Oak Island was uninhabited at the time of the discovery, that the kids were just playing around out there. In fact, it was inhabited. People were living on that island at that time. The land records from the time prove this. Also, when I began checking on previous versions of the story, I found them wildly different from one another. The legend changed really markedly. For example, between 1939, when I read an article on the Oak Island uh, treasure digs that was published in that year in Popular Science magazine, a lot changed between 1939 and 1991 when I read about it in the, Encyc in the uh, Encyclopedia of Unsolved Mysteries book that I showed you uh, in the first video. Um, all of these discrepancies therefore add up to the fact that we simply can't trust the accounts that are usually told about the discovery of, of the uh, supposed treasure pit and the first expeditions. So if it's not true, then where did the legend come from? That's a very good question. The Oak Island legend closely resembles numerous other buried treasure legends that were very hot in pop culture in the 19th century. Both Robert Louis Stevenson's Kidnapped, that, that famous novel that many of you read in middle school, and Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Gold Bug, both of those crib very heavily from these legends and specifically this one. People my age, mid-40s, uh, may remember The Gold Bug because it was made into a TV special. I believe it was an ABC After School special. Uh, it was made in 1980, starring Robert Blossom, uh, the actor best known for play, portraying the creepy old guy in the Home Alone movies, and a young Anthony Michael Hall, later of Breakfast Club fame. Anyway, the 19th century pop culture stuff is important. Treasure stories of this kind often involve an initial discovery by children. They also involve occult-themed or supernatural clues, as well as a trap that prevents recovery of the treasure except by someone exceptionally enlightened or virtuous. In fact, in most of these stories, the trap was a supernatural one. The treasure is guarded by a ghost or a spirit or something like that which of course is the plot of every Scooby-Doo episode, except that in Scooby-Doo, the ghost always turns out to be fake. Well, the main difference between these tall tales of the 19th century and the Oak Island legend is that in the Oak Island legend, the trap is purely mechanical, the flood tunnels. This, more than anything else, is, I believe, why this legend has survived into the modern era where the others have not. Treasure stories with a, with a supernatural bent uh, are, in our modern world, ex explicitly recognizable as folklore. If we hear a story like this, that there's a buried treasure behind the bridge and a ghost that's uh, guarding it, you know, we know that's folklore. They're not likely to be taken as factual truth. If the trap, however, is changed from a supernatural one to one that's plausible in the real world, 
then what you've done is you've given the legend legs to rise above the supernatural wives' tales. That's why this legend has survived when others of its kind have not. So this is exactly what happened in the Oak Island case, and I'm going to return to this hypothesis in the final video in this series. In any event, it should be coming very clear to you that the evidence for treasure on Oak Island is pretty much non-existent, and the evidence that the whole legend is at best a piece of folklore and at worst a confidence scam, the evidence of that is mounting. In the next and final article in this series, I'll describe the logic problem at the heart of the Oak Island legend, which itself is a very strong indicator that there's nothing buried there, and in fact, there never was. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.